yeah, okay. Uh, in this presentation, we are going to talk about uh, the story of uh, two subsidy projects in the direction of uh, intelligent transportation system that we executed in the city of Hamburg. And the first one, the Greenford Transport, yeah, uh, it was about uh, prioritizing the cargo trucks moving through the port of Hamburg. Uh, here we will talk about the motivation behind the project, a little bit about the, the components of the architecture since the project is already over. I think we can only talk about the results that we uh, saw as the outcome of this um, project. The second one is the BD Move project. It is also about uh, prioritizing public buses in the city of Hamburg and with a special focus on protecting vulnerable road users uh, with uh, ITS, uh, VTX communication technologies, of course. And I will briefly talk about the, the PKI and the privacy concepts that we use there so that we can start some discussion on that one. Um, so the Greenford Transport Project, uh, it was executed, executed in the city of Hamburg with the lead of, of Hamburg Port Authority and other partners from Hamburg and also one partner from Netherlands. So in the, in the port of Hamburg, yeah, the annually, around about 92 million tons of goods are moving in and out. And mo almost half of this, uh, this cargo is, is moved by the cargo trucks. And if you look at this map here in the left, um, there's a special breeze here, which is used by uh, uh, the ships there, also by rails, and also by the road traffic. So with all these trucks uh, moving in and out of this uh, strip of, of land here, if the traffic is not optimized, you can imagine the, the congestion can get uh, pretty heavy in this area. And if the traffic flow is not optimized, meaning if the, if the cargo trucks have to continuously, let's say, stop at the, at, at the traffic crossings each time they pass through this, uh, this strip of uh, uh, street, there will be a significant emission because of constant acceleration and deceleration. So to avoid this scenario, what we came up with was we wanted to prioritize the cargo trucks so that when they are passing through this area, they would ideally not have to stop at the traffic lights. And the other feature that we wanted to focus on was also to give uh, information to drivers as a feedback that how fast or how slow they should drive uh, to make it through the, uh, the green light or until the next green light. Yeah, in this slide, uh, we can see the, the key components of the architecture that we used in, in, this, uh, in this project. So there are three key components, I would say. The first one is, of course, the onboard unit that sits in the cabin of the truck. The other uh, the key component would be the roadside unit that's next to the traffic light and also the, 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 the communication protocols that enable these two components to talk to each other. Yeah? So whenever a cargo truck is approaching, um, the, let's say the, the, the traffic junction there, they can request a priority at the, for the, with, with the traffic light. And if the situation allows, um, they are either uh, um, granted a priority, meaning that the, the green phase if there is one, it is, is extended and they can pass through the crossing without having to uh, stop at the traffic lights. Yeah, or, or depending on the situation, they can be denied as well. And in addition to that, um, there's, there's an app, um, um, mobile smartphone app that can tell the users, um, like gives them the information on how fast they need to drive and also gives them the feedback on whether the, the priority or the extension of the green light that they requested was granted to them or not. Uh, but I would like to highlight here that due to some regula regulatory hurdles um, in the cabin, we were not allowed to provide additional screen to the driver. So that was not a part of the pilot phase, but the, the feature was kind of implemented. So with these key components, uh, we carried out a pilot phase for about six months and with about uh, around about 150 trucks. We did the data collection from the uh, roadside infrastructure, mostly from Bluetooth sensors and then the induction loops that were already there, and also from the control unit of the traffic lights. 
we collected the data for a period of six months and then DLR did an independent assessment of, of the data that was collected and uh, we already published um, the, the results uh, around the ITS World Congress that uh, that happened last year in Hamburg. So the, what we saw here was the uh, around about 21% of the cases when the heavy trucks were requesting the extension of the green light, it was granted. I know this number is not significant. There, there are some reasons behind it, but uh, we saw some success here. And in the cases where the traffic, uh, let's say the, the, the green phase was extended in that scenario, uh, the, the travel time was reduced by up to 60%, yeah? And we did the pilot phase only for six months, but we made an extrapolation with this kind of infrastructure, with this kind of system deployed to trucks uh, for over a year, we can reduce the emission uh, in this area by 109 uh, tons of uh, CO2. So um, what we demonstrated with this project is that just by enabling uh, the, the roadside users to talk to the traffic infrastructure, we can not only, uh, let's say, improve the traffic, uh, but also bring uh, value to the environment and also to the city. Yeah? So now let's go to the next project that we executed in the city of Hamburg, BD Move. Um, in this project, most of the partners were, of course, the local infrastructure owner uh, from Hamburg itself, DLR, IFAC, Script, and, 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 and XP. So, um, in Germany, around about 25% uh, of the Germans, yeah, they use uh, bicycles uh, for their regular commute to work, school, or university. And, especially during the pandemic period, yeah, the 35% the, the more bicycles were sold, meaning more and more people are, were using the bicycles. And I was one of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I got myself a gravel bike during that period. Uh, and I'm not sure if, uh, if you can relate to this, but sometimes uh, I have seen the scenarios, I have been in the scenario myself a couple of times. Uh, like I was close to uh, being in an accident in the, in, the urban, in the urban mobility situations, yeah. Um, Either you are professional or you are a beginner, um, you can get into accidents all the time. Maybe these kinds of, uh, these kinds of, let's say, the bike accidents, even with the professionals, we cannot avoid uh, with the technology right now. But there are other road accidents. I think we can uh, um, improve or we can reduce the, the number of accidents uh, by uh, by enabling uh, infrastructure to talk to roadside unit. As you see at the numbers uh, around the world, uh, yeah, for example, in Africa and in Asia, they, we have we see the trends that the the, uh, the deaths uh, due to the bicycle accident is, is increasing. In Europe, it, we have we see the decreasing trend. However, the, the numbers are significant. Yeah, the every life is precious, and we'd like to reduce that numbers as much as possible. So the the question that we asked us, ourselves in the project BD Move was, can we make roads safer for vulnerable road users by the use of uh, uh, communication modules that we can uh, install either in the uh, roadside with the, with the road users or even on the bicycles itself? That's how the project BD Move started. Yeah. So uh, among among the the protection of the the vulnerable road users, we had uh, many other use cases. As I mentioned earlier, the, the first one was, of course, we wanted to prioritize uh, the public transportation buses uh, in the city of Hamburg, so that ideally they would only need to stop at the at the uh, at the bus stops and not at the traffic signals. And the second one was to provide uh, the anti-collision assistant uh, to the bus driver whenever there is a possibility of uh, of a collision. And um, all this communication, uh, whenever you have this kind of communications happening between the different, uh, different players here, we need to make sure that it is uh, secure and we are considering the privacy of the users as well. Therefore, we, uh, we look into the, the, uh, the technical specifications and the guidelines laid out by Etsy. So we'll, we'll talk about that slightly later. And then we tried out new um, interface that uh, that links um, uh, the, the, the roadside infrastructure with the 
with the with with, with the uh, forecasting uh, forecasting computer that we have centrally. Yeah, and similar to the the Green Forty uh, project that we talked about earlier, the key components here are again the roadside unit that sits on the bus. The onboard, uh, sorry, on, on, on the traffic lights, the onboard units that's sitting on the buses, the communication protocol uh, that enables them to talk to each other. And there is one additional component here is uh, the VTX cameras that are also able to talk to the other road users and also to the infrastructure. So uh, how do we protect uh, vulnerable road users in urban mobility situation? Yeah. So, uh, let's have a look at the, the the image on the left side of this slide here. Uh, um, let's say um, the, the there's a bus and there's uh, the cyclist there if they are moving in in, in a parallel direction, but uh, the the bus suddenly wants to turn right at some junction, and in this scenario the 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 cyclist that is usually uh, uh, driving in parallel to the bus or in parallel to the heavy trucks they are usually in the blind spot of the of the of the drivers yeah and then that's the reason why um the, the this kind of accidents happen so to address uh, this problem uh, we kind of looked into two approaches what the first one was uh using the infrastructure itself so uh from with, with the help of v2x uh, capable uh, cameras um the, this camera would be able to detect the position of the of the vulnerable road user their speed and their potential trajectory which they would then come uh, uh communicate to the the central forecasting unit and then and since we are here dealing with the the public buses uh, and then we have the information let's say programmed on the onboard unit that is sitting on the buses itself so we know most of the cases that how the buses are going to turn left or turn right so with this kind of information we can make a projection that uh, in certain cases there is a possibility of collision and if that happens then uh, the drivers in the in, in the buses are notified via v2x messages and uh, we can see uh, the the warning messages uh, on the buses as shown in the right side of the image uh, and then the other approach that we uh, implemented in a couple of demonstrators that we developed uh, throughout the project was installing uh, the the communication module the the the, the on sort of an onboard unit for the vulnerable road users yeah be it uh, e-scooters uh, be it cargo bikes be it electric bike or the normal bike so we when we have this onboard unit installed on them uh, they would be able to let's say broadcast their position their speed to the other road users and then yeah and and then uh, whenever there is a possibility of collision um, the, the the drivers on the buses would receive a a warning message um in the last slide um i wanted to briefly uh talk about uh let's say the the pki and the privacy concepts uh that we used um the the vehicular pki is slightly different uh from the normal pki setup that we are used to i think um so on the top and the, the on the top here that we have is uh the uh, trust list manager and then the cits point of contact that is operated by european commission and then uh, the root CA, and then the in enrollment authority, and then the authorization authority that was provided by Script, and then the 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 on the lower side, um, uh, everything is maintained by the BDMO partners. Yeah, um, for an ITS stations, uh, either be it onboard units on the buses or the the RSUs on the traffic light, they need to be a part of this PKI. They need to register to this PKI to be able to be a part of it, to be able to communicate with each other. So they would register uh, via enrollment authority. Uh, they would get one long-term certificate uh, for them to, so that they, they have the right kind of, let's say, um, permissions to be able to um, uh, be a part of this network. However, uh, however, we, in, in, in vehicular uh, PKI, we also need to focus on the privacy concepts, because if you are using the same certificate with the same name or even with this uh, one single pseudo name, uh, if you use it uh, long enough, uh, it is possible that we can uh, track 
the movement of the of the vehicles around the city and then that is something that we would like to avoid and to address the situation uh, this problem uh, we have additional entity here that we call authorization authority that uh, provides the authorization tickets to the ITS stations uh, for this normal communication uh, with the other road users. So um, once you're enrolled uh, with enrollment authority, you can use that certificate uh, to talk to the authorization authority. The authorization authority would then verify uh, the certificate with the enrollment authority. And then based on that, uh, uh, it would provide you, uh, let's say a bunch of um, authorization tickets that you can use. So what we did in the BD move was we used a short-lived uh, authorization ticket. I think one, uh, the one authorization ticket was uh, lasting for one week or so, and we preloaded a bunch of, of uh, authorization ticket at once, and we would uh, circulate uh, or rotate these uh, uh, these authorization tickets and use them and. Uh, in that way, uh, it it is hard to let's say track these uh, IT stations moving around the cities. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, in, in Hamburg, um, there are a couple of other uh, ITS projects going on as well. Uh, Tough, and there's another one I think Heat as well. So, and in, in the city of Hamburg, if you want to let's say execute uh, ITS projects, the the players are usually the same. Uh, the owner of the infrastructure. That's why we have. Uh, a unified uh, harmonized PKI system. So, uh, if you are a part of one project, you can still talk to infrastructure on the in, in the other project. Um, so, um, in, in in this project, we uh, we are compliant with the technical specification outlined by Etsy, uh, and also uh, outlined by the IEEE. Um, we we with these two projects that we, we implemented in the in the city of Amber, we we have demonstrated that okay with 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 uh, with, uh, with with this connectivity module uh, we can bring additional value uh, to the to the road users we can improve the traffic situation we can bring uh, let's say more safety uh, to the vulnerable road users however there's still uh, some questions that are open uh, that we did not solve in this project maybe and that's something we need to address in subsequent uh, projects. For example, let's say there's a truck uh, that is leaving the port of Hamburg and, and going to a different city. Yeah? And then uh, again, can we have a system there uh, where using the same set of, let's say, uh, the onboard unit and the same set of certificates they have on them, they can request priority in, in, the, in a different city where, where the, that, that's their final destination. And uh, that is still open and also, how um, let's say there are two different cities uh, Im implementing their own uh, let's say pilot projects uh, with ITS projects. How do we uh, manage the interoperability -oper in this in this situation? Uh, those um, questions are still open, I think. But we have shown that uh, we can let's say we can at least bring some value to the city, to the environment, and to the people uh, with uh, this ITS. Yeah, uh, with this, I would like to uh, conclude my presentation. Uh, if there are any questions, please let me know.